First Chronicles, chapter 21. When we talk about and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. The main point of the chapter 21 and 2 Samuel 24 is Israel. David said to Joab, that's the commander in chief of the army, and to the rulers of the people, go number Israel from Bathsheba, that's down south, even to Dan, that's north. Using Beersheba to Dan means the southern, most southern uh, coast to the most northern coast. And bring the number of them to me that I may know it. So David has in his mind, I want to know the population of Israel. And Joab answered, the Lord make his people a hundred times so many more as there be. I mean, we're just a populous growth of people. We're growing and growing. God had told Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, as the stars of the heavens, as the sand on the sea. And Joab, I mean, there's so many of us. But my Lord, the king, respect, are they not all my Lord's servants? Is not the nation under you? Do I not honor you as king? Why does my Lord require this thing? Why will he be a cause of trespass to Israel? Joab is seeing something. What the king is asking for. And really, the Bible does not, doesn't say, but let's read on. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. The king said it. Americans can't even get that with the President of the United States. President said it? Okay, let's do it. Joab is honoring the, the, the rulers that be, Romans chapter 13, and, and Peter writes, and Solomon writes in Ecclesiastes about, hey, that's the ruler. Proverbs writes about, that's the ruler. Now, Joab, in verse number 3, and we don't know what the sin really is. Because we're going to see David outright say, I repent of the sin. Joab's trying to explain to David rightfully, hey, there is something wrong with this petition. Joab has care for David. And David fights Joab. And we see, hey, the king's word, David. All right. And it implies the fact is that maybe Joab's right. The king's word prevailed again. The King James Bible prevails over all the modern Bibles written by man. I've got this Bible. i got this version. Hey, the king. There's only one King Bible. King James. What the King James Bible says, that's the word. That's over yours, a man. Wherefore, Joab departed. And went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And we'll look at 2 Samuel in a moment. He did a, a kind of roundabout way. He didn't give it a full unction, a full authority that was to be there. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David. And all they of Israel were a thousand thousand. Is that a proper? A thousand thousand. And a hundred thousand men that drew sword. And Judah was 400, 403 score and 10,000 men that drew sword. Well, Joab only counted the army. David said, go number Israel from Bathsheba to Dan. He didn't say just the army, folks. He says, I want to know. And Joab explains to David, hey, you know what you're doing here? It, it's kind of wrong. All right, all right, you're the king. Fine. And he goes out and he does a half job. Joab's heart was not in it, whatever this thing may be. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abominable to Joab. Now look at that. As much as there are sins, abomination to God, this counting the people was abominable to Joab. He hated it. And God was displeased with this thing. 
Therefore, he smote Israel. The thing of Joab or the thing of David? And David said unto God, right after verse 7, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. So the sin of verse 7 is upon David, not Joab. But now I beseech thee, do away, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. That's David's confession over this numbering, the census, the poll that he had asked Joab to do, and Joab hated it. And Joab tried to reason with the king, but there was no reasoning. Second Samuel chapter 24. And we're reading Samuel's account. And this chapter breaks into three a good four lessons. And 2 Samuel 24, 1. Again, the anger, the anger of the Lord. Remember, it was Satan, 1 Chronicles 21. Well, look at 2 Samuel 24, 1. And we did this last night. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. The motives, the motive of what we're doing here and what just happened is because God is angry at Israel, the nation. And he moved David where we read in Chronicles, the devil provoked David against them to say, go number Israel and Judah. So there's a thing with God going on. I, I want to know the count of Israel because they're, they're just making me angry. David, I want you to go do it. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel, all the tribes. But we read in 2 Samuel, it said uh, he didn't count Levi and there was another Benjamin. tribe he didn't count. Benjamin. That's not the full orders. David, with these two books at hand, chapter 24 and chapter 21, David won a full count. But it's God working behind the scene. It's Satan working behind the scene. Go through all the tribes of Israel. From Dan, even to Bathsheba, that's just north to south. As, as far as north, as far as south. And number ye the people that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said to the king, Now the Lord thy God add unto the people, How many soever there be, a hundredfold, and that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. Look at all these people, you can see. But why does my Lord the king delight in this thing? There's something wrong. That even Joab says this is wrong. Notwithstanding the word, notwithstanding the king's word prevailed against Joab. Now, let's keep your place there, but look at Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Keep your place in 2 Samuel. But Ecclesiastes 8, 4. As far as the King James Bible, and as far as a ruler of a nation. Oh, I don't like that guy. But look at the King James Bible, and look at King David, who's going to give his throne over to David. Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, King James, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Joab's trying to. I think Joab's trying to do right here. But the king said it. You may go up to the president of the United States or the queen of England and say, listen, the Bible says leave Israel alone. Oh. Don't tell me. I'm... Okay. Try to show you what the Bible said. I'm not going to stop you to do what you're going to do. I just try to warn you. The Bible has things for a ruler of any nation. You're to do this. You're not to do that. You're to do this. You're not to do that. And you can't change your mind. When you go into public ministry, you can't force them to get saved, but you can give them what God says about salvation, what God's idea of salvation, what God's salvation is, and what they do with it, well, that's between them and God. 
But you have an authority here. You have a ruler, David. You ain't going to slay him down. David would have all rights. Okay, take, take Joab and separate his head from his body. I'm the king. And they would have done it. But I think Joab's right. Verse 4, uh, 2 Samuel 24. Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host. So everyone's there. And Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan and pitched Aurora. That's over, way over east of the Jordan River. They're not in the promised land. They're in the land of Gad. That's what I want to say. Moses, can we have this land? Okay. The right city that lies in the midst of the river of Gad. And toward Jezer. That's on the east side of the Jordan. That's literally not Israel's land. Though they said the two and a half tribes said, can we have it? That's not the promised land. And they came to Gilead. That's a little bit more north. To the land of Tathahustai. And they came to Dan Jean about the Zidon. That's over by the Mediterranean Sea. They're making like a, it's a big sea. But there's a lot in that backward sea that they're not filling in. And it and came to the stronghold of Tyre, that's right on the Mediterranean Sea coast, to the cities of the Hivites. What's he doing there? It's supposed to be the Jewish. And of the Canaanites, he's supposed to go to the children of Israel. What's he doing in the Canaanite area? And they went out to the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. Well, they're, they made almost a closed-up circle. And I forget, is it Alpha or Omega? One of those things, it looks like a, it's like a, a, a big circle that fell over and has got two feet. Well, that's what the, if you look on a map and run there, that's exactly what it looks like Joab did. He just didn't fill in the middle. <laughs> so when they had gone through the land, they came to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and 20 days. You know, I mean, you know, I mean, lands there are in the vast land. I mean, there's no jets, there's no airplanes, there's no cars, there's no motorcycles. You're on a camel, donkey, as maybe an oxen, or on your own two feet. And you're walking up and down a farmland, and there's probably another half an acre, two acres, four acres, five acres, six acres, 50 acres to the next farm. You got to go count everybody if you're going to do the job properly. And Joab gave to some the number of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 valiant men. What about the invaliant? That drew sword, army, military. It's almost like he went to his own troops where they lived and knew where they were. Said, okay, let me count you guys. That's what it looks like. He's the leader of all the army. And the men of Judah were 500,000 men. David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. And David said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. Now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity. Now look at the charge. David says a sin. Joab is angry with him. And when we look at it, there's one point here. Exodus 30, verse 12. Exodus 30, verse 12. And I don't know if this is the answer. But I'm going to give you what they say. I don't know. Exodus 30, verse 12. Now, is it wrong to have a census? What's the book of Numbers about? Did not Solomon count up the children of Israel? Did not Jesus himself, if a king says, I'm going to go do battle with another king, sit down first, say, hey, do I have enough men to challenge that king? If not, I can send an ambassador of peace. So it's not the census itself. Exodus 30, verse 12. When thou takest the sum of the children of Israel, census, after their number, they shall, then shall they give every man a ransom for his soul unto the Lord. When thou numbers them, that there be no plague among them, when thou numbers them. For they shall give every one that passes among them that are numbered, Half a shekel after the shekel of the sanctuary. And what they're saying here is when David numbered those men, 
though it's not a complete number, they prescribe here, the law says you were supposed to give a town of money. Now, I don't know if Joab was mad that, and, and you could say it's a tax, it's a head tax, it's a poll tax. And this happens throughout history. And the census itself is not wrong. But the fact is, and we know David's heart is right to God. And we know already that God is angry with Israel. And maybe, okay, you didn't pay your, your fees here. You didn't pay the, the shekel. Could it be even possibility that David was at a point that he's relying on the population over God? Do I have enough people to overpower God's blessing? Can I put more reliance on horses than than God, where the Bible says that's wrong. The Bible says it is a sin to put confidence in man. It's a sin to say, hey, my horses are better than God in military strength. That would be a sin. But we know where it is. God is angry with Israel. Leave it just as that. That God and Satan are involved. We'll leave it like that. What David asks, Joab to do, Joab think, man, this is an abomination. I'm only going to do a half job. I'm not doing this to the fullest. And then as the end result, the numbers come in, and they're not complete. The next thing David does is he will repent. And we're going to look at that repent again next time, Lord willing. And then the next thing that happens is almost a complete total destruction of God upon the children of Israel. He's so angry. What exactly is that sin that David confessed? It's not mentioned. It's not told. Now, I have been under the assumption I couldn't find it today, so I might be wrong. I thought there was in the law where a king was not to count the people. But I can't find nothing like that, so I may be wrong. I go through and I mark it. I'm going to cross-reference that, but I could be wrong. There's many things I thought were in the Bible that are not. I have been wrong. But I do know one thing the Bible does say throughout the pages. If you put confidence in man, if you put confidence in horses, you put confidence in numbers, you put confidence in anything but God. That's a sin. That could be the possibility of what David's doing now.